Hi, I'm Marcia Mason, an artist with Rancho Cordova Arts in Rancho Cordova, California. I'm here today to show you how I was trained to do watercolor washes and then some tips that I've picked up since then. Let's get started. The paper that you use should be a cold press paper. And the reason that you use cold press is because there are little divots all through the paper. It has quite a texture to it. It's a series of hills and valleys. And what happens is for our washes, the granulation from the pigment, the little particles, settle into the valleys in kind of an even way. And that's very helpful for what we want to do. Now cold press paper, if you get the good stuff, and I urge you to, is made out of 100% cotton. Now when you get it wet, it's going to stretch. And when it dries, it might not be flat. So uh, you can deal with this in two ways. What I do is I buy paper in a block, and that's what I was just showing you. It's got kind of a rubber cement material all the way around, except for this one little place. When you're done with your, oh, not that place, this place. This place does not have rubber cement under it, right here. So what you do is you stick a knife under there and, and uh, break the seal and pull off your finished piece. But we're not gonna do that because we're not done yet. Now the other way is, is the way I learned, which is called stretching your watercolor paper. So I have here a piece of fluid cold press cotton watercolor paper. I have taken uh, my giant roll of paper tape. It's just a craft paper tape with an adhesive on it. And I'm going to get it wet. You can also just use a spray bottle to get it wet. And the paper, I I'm going to go in about one half inch. There we go. And just there. Now that's all done. And I'm going to let that dry. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little um, place here where the paper has expanded. And it should flatten out as it dries. What you should do is soak it for about 15 minutes, front and back. Bathtub's great for this. And uh, then shake it out uh, and stick it down on a board. I've used a um, um, masonite clipboard before. That works really well. Or um, uh, this is just a piece of uh, wood, which was uh, a, a lid to something. So I'm going to let that dry. And we're going to go back to our block to show you what to do. Now, this you don't have to do anything with. What I did is I put some artist tape down. This is all it is. It comes in various widths. You can get it at any art store. And I just wanted to divide off the paper so that I could show you a couple different things. Now, the traditional way to to do a wash is that you tilt the paper 15 degrees. So I'm going to use my tape just to, as something to hold it up. You start at the top, we're going to work down, gravity is going to assist us, and the key is to keep a wet edge. <clears throat> now today I'm going to use uh, watercolor. This is a French ultramarine blue from Windsor Newton, and it's it's important that you make up all the paint you're going to use so that you don't run out midway. That's where your wash will show a line. Now that's a little bit, little bit thicker than I really want, so I'm going to add a little bit of clear water right here and I see that I have done something that I have to be careful of it's going to mess up my demo if you mix your paint on your brush if you don't get all of that off it's going to mess up your wash so I'm since 
this paint is has made quite a few little blobs on my brush. I am going to just kind of scrape that off and use a different brush. In choosing a brush, you can really do just about any shape, but the important thing is to pick one that's going to hold plenty of paint and water on it because you want it nice and juicy. So let's go with this one. Get that nice and wet. Okay. So this is dry paper. We're gonna start at the top and just work our way across. And I see little blobs on that one too. Okay. Let's just try. We're gonna start right there. Okay. You can see right away, oh, that's lovely. You can see right away that we have a little beaded edge there. There we go. And, you know, I, I like my bead to be a little bit more definite, so I'm going to tilt this paper a little bit more. Okay, we go all the way across. I did like my other brush better, but here we go. Here we go. Okay, let's do that again. Okay, now I'm going to go back here and pick up the bead, just the edge of the bead and pull it down into the next. Oh boy, look at that run. Oh yes. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. What happens if you um, don't keep a wet edge, like right here, if I let that dry, you would have a definite line in your wash, and that is what we don't want. So, there we go. Yes, more paint. Oh, -ho, and look at that big blob that I didn't get mixed out. Yes, being patient is important, and I, that's not something in long supply. <laughs> around here. <laughs> I want it now. Okay, so you can see this is one of those paint blobs that uh, that just ran itself right along my wash. So I'm going to see. I uh, don't know if that's going to work or not, but we'll try it. Okay, now I am just going to leave kind of a rough edge here because I want to show you something else. Okay, now this this wash has kind of turned out light at the top and darker at the bottom and if you were doing a sky for instance you would want it to be darker at the top and lighter at the bottom for most cases, most times a day. So a lot of times if you're going to do a sky, you turn the paper upside down and start out with the darkest color of your sky and then you add a little more water in that or you change color and I will show you that next. That's called a gradated wash. But this is, let me leave a little bit right there. Uh, this is a flat wash. Now, do, 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 we have this this tape here, and it's holding a little bead of paint. So I'm going to go in here with a dry brush and just barely, 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 barely pick that up so I don't get a real dark bead right there. And because I have the paper tilted, the, it will con the paint will continue to come down a bit, and I think that'll cover. 
Over here, I don't think I have an issue. I'll just wipe that off of the tape. But I'm not touching the paper over here. I don't have a little, uh, a little uh, ditch that's that's keeping the paint there. Okay, so the reason I picked this artist tape is it's easy to come off and it doesn't wreck your finish. So there we have pretty much a flat wash um, on dry paper. Now, here is the trick that I learned just by trial and error. I like to get my paper wet. And that way, it, it's a little easier to keep the, the uh, horizontal lines out of it. Okay, so I have just sprayed with water. I'm going to take a clean brush and just brush that water over the entire surface. There we go. Don't have to be neat about it, just so I have a little start. And I'm going to let that dry so that, there, a little flubber there. Let that dry so that it's just a little bit shiny. Well, not shiny, kind of just kind of damp. And what that will do is make it a little harder for me to mess up, which is really nice. Now while, while that is drying, I'm gonna go back to this wash and show you something fun. Let's see if this works. When you have, let, let's say that's a sky wash. In fact, let's turn it upside down because <clears throat> the way it came out, it's a little bit darker <clears throat> up here and a little lighter down here. I'm going to make a distant hillside back here. And if this is, I think it will work. This is still damp enough. I should get, I should get a little bit of this paint running into my sky. And usually you don't stop your wash right at, there we go, gravity do your thing. Uh, usually you don't stop your sky right at the edge of the of the hillsides, the landscape, what you usually do, okay, let's get that a little darker there. What you usually do is let your sky run into the mountain and it makes a little softer edge. And that's what I've done here. I painted right over my sky wash for the, um, for these uh, trees. Okay, now we'll see if we can get that to go. Come on. This is a uh, perylene green. It's uh, also called shadow green. Uh, Holbein makes it, sh calls it shadow green and I think Winsor Newton calls it perylene green. And um, very versatile color. This is the one I like because it's kind of the color of evergreen forest. Now I'm just adding a little bit more water here because this wasn't quite as wet as I had hoped. Oop, let's get those little streaky things out of there. But, there we go. Gravity and shaking. You can see here that it looks a little bit like a, a tree line without much effort at all. So that's kind of fun. Now, let's get back to this. This is damp, and that's what I like. So let's get going with our second wash. Now this one, I'm going to add a little bit of water as we go. So I'm gonna start out dark. Oh, you need lots and lots of paint. Yes. Okay, I'm going to start out real dark. Okay. Oh, not that much paint. Okay. Okay. Lots of paint. 
bring it down here to the next level. Just catch that bead and pull it. Uh huh. And now, let's see. Well, I'm going to go over that a bit because I see a line. There we go. Now I'm going to add some water to my paint here. So it will be a little bit lighter on this pass. See, I've lost my bead. I have to work fast, so. Okay. I'm going to give it a little more water. And I'm going to add a little bit of permanent rose. So pretty. Just a little bit for starters. And maybe a little more water. There we go. And here we go. Oh yeah. And that edge is staying wet even though I really didn't put quite enough paint on it because my paper's a little bit damp. Okay, we're just gonna go like over that. And get a little more of that rose in there. You can see as we go from the the paper that it's uh, it's warped right through here. The paper is expanded. Now, if your paper this is a block, so I don't anticipate any warpage when it's all dried. But if it if you did end up with a watercolor that had uh, had warpage, then what I would do is put it face down on a piece of clean white paper and because it's cotton, give it a quick ironing on the back. You can put a, down a towel on top of it so you're not, you don't have the iron right on the paper and just flatten it out and it works. So you can always get it flat again. Okay, so here we have our gradated wash. I added water and I added another color to our wash as we went down. So flat wash, gradated wash, easy tree line while this wash is still, um, still wet. Um, that is how you do it. So not much to it. Um, do you use good paper, good paint, a uh, brush that holds plenty of paint and water and uh, have some fun with this. Now, if you uh, do any paintings, we encourage you to post them on our Facebook page, Rancho Cordova Arts, and uh, and please join us again for our for more art tutorials with Rancho Cordova Arts. Bye for now.